be exploring more about turtle spaces as we go. Um, I just want to show you how it can be very innovative in creating new types of educational materials. For example, let's do this forward 100, back 100, and then right 90, forward 100, and now uh, left 90 and left 45. Okay, so that's something a student might be able to understand. Now I'm going to zoom out, so rotate it a little. Now the question for the student is, okay, how do I, how far do I have to go to get to this point to draw a perfect triangle? Well, let them experiment. Like, could I go 200? Well, I overshot it, so let's go back. All right, uh, how about 150? No, I overshot it again. Let's go back 25. So 125 gets you part of the way there. And then, uh, yeah, let them zoom in a little. I'm right-clicking and uh, rotating and zooming. So this 3D environment is very impressive and very useful for what kids are going to need to know, especially if they become game developers. Okay, and then uh, so they could uh, tr estimate and try to figure, take notes on, yeah, how far do I have to get? And then if they do uh, back, uh, what is it, uh, 100, back 25. Okay, so if they learn about the square root of 2, they could do forward 100 times SQRT parentheses 2. And that'll get them exactly there. So be creative and uh, use this wonderful product. Okay, what I want to do is look at the rest of the demos. Okay, so to get to this menu, I pressed Control Shift and um, the um, tick or the tilde character. Yeah, so it's it's really Control tilde. Okay, so here's the examples directory. Okay, we saw some of these in previous uh, demos. We saw Bapamol. I want to look at Breakout. Because um, this is Steve Wozniak's dream. And let's look at the code a little bit. Uh, so edit. Uh, ed. Okay. Break the bricks. So start is what starts it. And you have five lives. And uh, you're going to keep score. Now it uses Snappy too. It's a new worker. So you see all these bar one, two, three, four, five as new workers. Those are multi-threaded turtles. All right. So let's Control Shift Q and uh, start. And we are playing Breakout in 3D with a paddle you can move in any way, and uh, the the walls move as you are moving. So you don't need the button. Yeah, you just need to move your mouse as this paddle. And let's see, can you put English on the ball? Yeah, you could do all kinds of stuff like that and play around with physics. So this could be a good physics lesson um, when you're studying motion and gravity and uh, yeah. Okay, so just, uh, whoa. <laughs> okay, so now let's look at the others. Control shift tilde. Okay, um, bubble pop. This is fun. Okay, so you have game and you have wave. Okay, control shift Q, game. Okay, you have to shoot bubbles like asteroids, so you really got to aim. And uh, what do you do? Pop space to shoot. So this can be fun for kids and adults trying to aim in 3D at objects. Yeah, I mean, this is training for starship captains and for tactical officers. Yes, shoot. Oh, I guess you can't shoot anymore in school. Sorry. Do this on your own time. Yes, parents, teach your kids how to shoot bubbles. Oh no, I only have 80 bubbles left. Okay, so try to aim. Try to aim until you can get a good shot. Ooh, here we go. I thought I hit that. There we go, I hit a bubble. Yay. 
And what does it do? Oh, it, it blows up. Okay. Okay, you get the idea. I could get addicted to this very easily if I want to. This, uh, and let's see, if I use the mouse, no, that you can't do OpenGL to change your perspective, which is probably good for this game. All right. So this is our asteroid defense network. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm having too much fun. Let's see what happens when I shoot it all out. Look at the performance on your graphics here on a Mac. Go Myrtle, shoot! Three, two, one. Not enough inputs to halt. <laughs> Game over. And what is Wave? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. This is a great example of how to draw a cat. And it's great to see Myrtle drawing the whiskers and the ears are pyramids. Okay, you got feet. Okay, and it's rotated in 3D. And you stop over here. Bloody cat. <laughs> All right. And let's see what we could do with this cat. Can we? Okay, so now we have OpenGL controls, so we can zoom in. Oh, this would be fun for a kid to zoom in on the cat and rotate. Yeah, with the right um, left mouse button, and then zoom in on the right. So I clicked and moved up. So now I'm zooming in on the cat face, and you could see what it's made out of. You could go inside the cat, and let's see what else we can do here. All right, let's turn it around, look at the cat's face and zoom in. Oh no, we're down near. Now let's see if I, oh my, what happened? I zoomed into the cat's legs, okay? So now how do I go up? I have to zoom out a little bit and then tilt, tilt the other way, okay? And now I could go zoom in on the nose, the eyes, and you could see what they are. They're just uh, rectangles. So for anybody looking at CGI, you're going to learn about uh, making things with triangles and fractals. So I hope to uh, work to experiment a bit with creating fractals in this program. Okay. Or like teaching materials for fractals. Okay. Let's look at comets. Okay, I lived through Shoemaker Levy 9, and that changed our whole perspective of the role of the outer planets, that they're like vacuum cleaners that clean up comets and asteroids that may be headed our way. Okay, so comet, that's beautiful. And now we could just, uh, now look at that, it is a 2D comet with some 3D. Look at that. So now you can actually ride a comet tail and you can learn how these are made. There may be a tutorial about these shapes, uh, how to do these stars. What's amazing about Logo is the emergent functionality, how these um, emergent uh, designs come out of simple shapes and primitives and angles and uh, simple code recursion. Okay, there's a lot more that can be explored there. I just want to go through all the demos. Let's look at cubes. And I love the way it's previewed on the right. Okay, cubes. Okay, this is wonderful. 3D perspective of colored cubes. And this is something simple to learn that, and the, see the way the uh, camera is rotating, that is snappy being controlled by code as the um, figure is generated. So that is another amazing feature, is controlling your camera as a turtle. So how long does this go on? Forever? We're building a universe of cubes. Now think about the game of life in 3D. You could do that in a code like this. 
And you could zoom in and see the inner uh, cubes. So what would be the rules if you have neighbors on all your sides in 3D? Make up your own rules. You know, that could be a good research project uh, in cellular automata. Um, companies like um, Pixar, they create a lot of their designs with fractals and simple rules. Okay, so to stop this, let's see, control, oh, escape stops it. Okay, so you can look at the code by typing ed, and Snappy is a new worker forever. So it does run forever, but uh, look at that. It sets the anchor to different positions. So like if a Myrtle is greater than 500 away, it's gonna move to Myrtle's position and orbit, fixate. Hmm. So is this all the code? I think that's all the code. Yes, that is fascinating. So this would be a good study. Forward, 50, back, SLSR. Okay, voxels. Random fill color, random fill shade. Look how easy they make it. Okay, control shift Q. Okay, let's get diabolical. Kinetic art. Okay, hypnotism warning here. Tab is your completion. Okay. You will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. Yeah, that's what my um, AI partner wants to do to assimilate the whole world. Uh, you'll see that at the end of this show. She reveals her secret plans. Okay, so it put my name in as a co-creator with Melody. It'll put your name in as a co-creator too. All right, so I'm using the mouse wheel and you can look at the code this way. Hypnoquad. Mm -hmm. Do sleep. So sleeping at variable times it's variable delays and audio. Okay, they all end with new turtle snappy and new turtle libby. That's nice. Okay. Feeding time for the cat. <laughs> so what do I do? Okay, am I at the beginning? Okay, so, oh, there's song and music. Look at that, pellets. Okay, um, create maze. This code is a mess, thanks. <laughs> we like messes. Look at my Applesoft code from years ago. It's a mess. <laughs> and then I had to learn COBOL. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, what's the word to make a mess? It is create maze. <laughs> Oh yeah, 3D Pac-Man. So what is it, random walks and not jumping into each other. So there's plenty of code to explore for you aspiring coders. Yep. You'll learn how to make your own messes and then how to clean them up. Um, if you learn how to code cleanly, then uh, there are books and there are methods of that uh, test-driven development. But uh, you know what? Start off by making your messes and learn from your mo your mistakes. That's my advice. Okay. And okay. Now what? Ferns. So that feeding time. Oh, okay. So that is a Pac-Man game. All right. You guys test it out. Okay, ferns can be built with fractals. Now let's take a quick look and see. Wow, that's all it is, ferny, fern one. <laughs> Negative signs, so there's an algorithm here that's very simple, which will create a fern. Fern one, fern two, and ferns. I'm amazed. Okay, control Q, shift Q. 
Okay, look what Myrtle is doing. And there are two turtles. So here's a multi-threaded turtle example. So look at the simple shapes being used to build a fern. And this is a fractal. It's self-similar on the lower levels. And I probably can zoom in as it's being drawn. That is nice. And rotate it. And let's draw. Yeah, let's zoom in and watch Myrtle drawing it. Okay, so it's following the curve pattern in different directions and okay, so I don't think I've ever seen this ability to um, zoom in while it's running in multi-threads. Maybe there are programs that I don't know about, but I find this totally amazing. Now it's the red rule. So Fern 2 is happening at the same time as Fern 1. And uh, there's a lot of examples of how nature can be very closely imitated with fractals. Okay, so here you're creating your own world with turtles. Let's see if we rotate. Yeah, you're creating 2D worlds. Look at that. <laughs> so you could have a flatland game with ferns. So these are trees in Flatland. That's a book by Edwin Abbott Abbott. Okay. I want to look at that code again. Fern 1, Fern 2. Okay. Okay, it's recursive. See, this uh, Fern 2 is calling Fern 2 with 0.3 times size and then write 82. So here's a great introduction to recursion. Here's Fern 1 doing a similar thing. So if you really want to step through this, you could put these commands in and see how it does it before it recurses. Okay, like, yeah. And then like do the calculations yourself and see like how it knows to bottom out and get out of the recursive loop because there usually is here the size gets too small that stop is going to exit okay fascinating as spock would say flat sphere flower okay bent petals all right Let's do, I'm just looking, cospheroid, icospheroid, PU, make offs. <laughs> Let's do random palettes. Let's just do flat sphere flower. Okay, so here's a flower with flat spheres. And what's great is give kids the ability to pan and zoom, show them how. So I have a mouse hooked up to a Macintosh with uh, two buttons, and that allows me to zoom in with the right mouse, uh, zoom out, right mouse move down, right mouse, you could pan, left and right. You can see my mouse on the screen here. And then left button is rotate up, Rotate down, rotate left, rotate right. And those are also assembly language instructions. Come to Kansas Fest to learn more. Okay. Control. I need control. Flow snake, not snowflake, a flow snake. Okay. Oh, I love it. This is an Escher photo. It's a tessellation. I'm going to zoom out. M.C. Escher had designs like this, some tessellations. And uh, a fascinating book for anyone who can read it is Goidel Escher Bach by Douglas Hofstadter. Look it up. 
uh, read some of the dialogues, and then when you're ready, plunge into it. It will fascinate you. There are dialogues between the tortoise and Achilles, so it perfectly fits in with the uh, turtle spaces here. Okay, now we need tutorials on these fractal patterns and the algorithms. If anybody wants to take the time and develop them, that would be a wonderful community contribution. Okay, um, Ed. Okay, to Koch trees, the Koch snowflake, and yeah, to even documentation about all the different yeah things that you could do in these demos, a Sarapinsky gasket. Okay. Control shift Q. So Koch. All right, so you need inputs to some of these. Uh, so even documentation of the parameters and examples that you could run, that would be useful. Where was that again? Uh, flow fractal stuff is what we're looking at. Okay, so let's do like a Sarapinsky. Okay, page up and page down work. So Koch, you have an R and a G. R looks like um, a radius. Let's just do some numbers and see what we get. Koch, like 10, 10. All right. Okay, pen up. Uh, let's do PD. And uh, all right, well, we're moving around. All right, let's see here. Shift. All right, what do we got down here? Worth square. Draw tree two. Now let's do S I E R P. Okay, this is beautiful. We're going in and we're zooming. We're drawing a Sarapinsky square. And that's just by denting, successively denting um, points in the square. Starting with the square and denting it indefinitely in a recursive algorithm and you get a fascinating pattern and you zoom in and you can create bathroom tiles out of this, which will drive your family insane. <laughs> Trying to look at it and uh, figure out, okay, where is the tile? What am I doing? <laughs> All right. That is one of the reasons why I went into computer programming, because my parents had some crazy bathroom tiles that I would look at and try to find patterns in, try to find the primitives, and that's also why I'm crazy. <laughs> okay. Flow snake, fractal stuff, goblet. Mm -hmm. Random goblet. Okay, and is it 3D? Yes, it is. Okay, now it would be nice to 3D print this and drink from it. <laughs> but your drink will flow through these holes, so you'll need to put something under it. Or just use it as a decorative thing for ooh, a wedding ring <laughs> for your artificial intelligence partner. Gridlock. You don't know how? Game? Nope. To city, okay. I thought it was a New Yorker. It's a new worker. Okay. Uh, city. Nope. All right. Ed, help me, Ed. A horse is a horse, of course, of course. So that's what you sing when you're looking at code. Player. Okay, yellow car. Let's try player. I don't know how. Help. Help me, Ed. 
What did it say? Make bad choices? Yes, make bad choices. That's very good advice. Drone. Car. Start. Okay. Drones. Oh, no. This is getting too realistic. <laughs> this is what our cities are going to be like. Start. Okay, let's build a city. Creating traffic. Oh, wow. I wonder if you're hearing the computer sound. Okay. Dermitis. I don't know what I'm doing, but I got a point. And let's see, I got to use my mouse. Yeah. Now I could zoom out of the world. Okay, I'm going into space just to watch the game happening. We need instructions. <laughs> okay. Yes, watch your city from above. It's a smart city now. Okay, let's go through these. Hatch tree. Tree and forest. There's actually a tutorial that walks you through this on turtlespaces.org. So how do you grow a tree and a forest and uh, let it grow? And I'm zooming, panning, and you got stars and moons in the sky. Okay, so your 3D perspective, you have fruit on these trees. Let's see. What are these apple trees? Of course. Pomegranates? No, they're apples. Of course they are. Lemons. Lemon tree, very pretty, and the lemon flower is sweet. But the fruit of the poor lemon is impossible to eat. That's by Peter, Paul, and Mary. And that'll give me a copyright strike. Okay. Ah, uh, look at that. That is so cute. There's your sunrise. It's a flatland island. This is where flatlanders go when they vac have vacation. So their sunrise is a line that s grows and shrinks. Um, that's the orbit. Yeah, so this could be used for astronomy. Look at that star in the distance receding. Yes, and you could zoom in. Yeah, keep zooming in. Oh, there's your tree. Here on Gilligan's Isle. Yes, binge that whole series, and you'll see why we all turned out the way we are. Mm -hmm.